my god, it's so cold. I wish I could my own studio. Hey guys, it's Donnie. So a few months ago, I sold my iPhone 10 so I can get the iPhone XS. I know it's dumb. As it turns out, I didn't really see much difference between the iPhone 10 and the iPhone XS. But for some reason, I did enjoy using the iPhone XS more. This is my review of the iPhone XS. The iPhone XS was released September 28, 2018. And for some reason, it's very easy to get one at its release. My suggestion, when you're gonna pick up an iPhone at an Apple store, order one online and schedule a pickup. Otherwise, it may take an hour before you'll get an associate to help you out. This time, I get the silver variant, which is much grippier than the space gray version. And of course, after touching the gold variant, the gold variant seems much more grippier than the silver variant. Design-wise, of course, I like it. It's gorgeous. And the antenna placement seems a little weird, but usually I put a case on it, so it doesn't matter to me. I didn't get the 10X Max because I feel it's too big. The iPhone XS is already a stretch for me compared to when I was using my iPhone 7. The glass back gives it a premium feel, but it's necessary for wireless charging. If you want to protect the back, I would suggest install one of these chicken skins, who is actually sponsoring this video. If you want to get a wireless charger, I suggest getting those chargers that stands upright. In that case, you don't have to lean forward whenever you want to unlock your iPhone. You can just glance at your phone, then it will unlock for you. Face ID on the 10s I feel is much better. Because the response on the Face ID is much quicker, and I feel there's less lag whenever Face ID scans my face. I'm liking it better than the iPhone 10, and it's actually one of my biggest complaints from my previous video. Call quality is clear, but there are cases with Verizon where I get spotty signals. I know, Verizon, right? Maybe it's my phone, or maybe because I haven't switched to eSIM. When it comes to software, it can't be limited, but it's still smooth. It looks simple and plain, but I think that's what makes iOS better. It's because Apple doesn't really put too much junk on it. Very simple navigations, and you're sure that the apps will be reliable for your iPhone. The camera, of course, is great. I can't complain. But sometimes, it's too perfect. Smart HDR tends to take photos of what it thinks what a good photograph is. Not usually what we think, especially for us artsy farts. Otherwise, you can't go wrong when you just want to take a snapshot. And also there's a bunch of filters available you can choose from to enhance your image. Otherwise, this special button helps really enhance my image. Yeah, it's a trash button. Yeah, I, uh, I, I use it a lot. Okay, we're here in LA. I'm just testing the 4K video. Right now it's in uh, 30 frames per second, I think. As you can see, it's not too bad even though I have a very bright background. But of course, as I get into here, now I'm all blown out. But what it is, is this camera still, regardless of what lighting, it will adjust for you. Compared to other DSLR cameras, you need to have a lot of filters to make sure you, um, you don't have that much blown up areas. This camera does a pretty good job adjusting. So it's not too bad. Of course, this is bad in my face, but going back here is not too bad. Yeah, you may get some blurry background if you get a little closer. Yeah, it gets a little blurry in the back. That's probably why you need attachment lenses for you to be able to get some bokeh background, you could say. But otherwise, it's not too bad. Again, too much light's coming to my face. So I would always suggest this way if you're gonna be vlogging outside or um, taking a video outside. All right now, this time we're gonna test the stabilization. I'm running, I'm running. Oh my God. Okay, that's enough running. Okay, now this is the front-facing camera. Again, my face is like very bright, but when we get here, it's not too bad. Yeah, not too bad, see? It's even a good um, lens flare. See, it's all kind of pretty much blown out over there, but you can still kind of see it, still adjust. But what's best is being away from any harsh light like that. Um, Still not so much bokeh going on in the background like this. So in that case, you probably need like attachment lenses for you to be able to get good quality images. Uh, better quality images on this camera. Okay, this is recording from the iPhone XS. 4K at 30 frames per second using Filmic Pro. If you're gonna use this as your 
vlogging camera, do not use the mic that's built into the camera unless you're doing it indoors. If you're outdoors like this, use a lavalier. So you can kind of isolate some of the sounds that's surrounding you. But here's my conclusion. The iPhone XS has been the simplest phone I've ever used. I think these days I'm always looking for something that's very simple to use. I'm always trying to find an excuse why I should switch to a different device or to, to a different Android. I can always get the OnePlus for a better performance. I can always get a Note 9 so I can use the S Pen. I can even use the Pixel 3 so I can have a better camera. Heck, I can even get the iPhone XR so I can have the different color variants or the iPhone SE so I can have a smaller phone. To me, I'm gravitating back to an iPhone, specifically to the XS, not because of the camera or the speed, but mainly for the iPhone XS one hand usability, not the Max, just the regular XS. Of course, it's a seamless transfer of files between all my Apple devices, great camera, simple and fast performance. That's pretty much why I'm always gravitating back to the iPhone XS. Well, that's my review of the iPhone XS. If you like this video, of course, give it a like, comment, and please subscribe to my channel. Again, this is Donnie, and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care.